This is more about the coronavirus epidemic uh, set back in the summer of 2021. The battle between officials of various stripes and those who refuse to be vaccinated is getting more serious. I've heard talk of anger, shouting matches, fisticuffs, handcuffs, and lawyers. It's a struggle between public health and personal freedom. Neither side can understand the other and neither will budge. The COVID numbers are high and the pressure is increasing. And this takes me all the way back to the beginning of this epidemic, well over a year ago, when the one positive thing that people could say was, we are all in this together. Hoo hoo boy, no one would say that now. Nothing could be further from the truth. At best, we have opposing factions. I wish I could find a way to say, stand down, tell everyone to chill, because most everyone right now is on high alert, colored red or purple. Nearly everyone feels threatened by something in some way. There is tension in the air. I wish there was a way to reduce it. We have small parties in our home, but it only seems to intensify and spread like an epidemic, an epidemic of mental illness. A female writer in an interview on TV said that she owed her body of work to her father. In a book I'm reading, the author wrote that he became a writer in order to make life more bearable, possibly even happier for his mother. Also, he said that he was writing to lift the family curse. I am a writer, a word slinger, but I don't think any of my work either comes from my parents or is directed to them. My father was an engineer. He didn't read much. My mother was an avid reader, mostly pulp. I cannot say I wrote because of that or that I write for her. Neither of them thought of me as a writer. For all, for all they knew, I was not a baseball player or a doctor. That's pretty much it. So I wonder at the connection between these two writers have with their parents with respect to their work. When it comes to that, a sense of deep interest and feeling, I have a dry well. I'm reading a book by Roy Blount, and I got a bad feeling about it. Authors I've been reading have been dying on me. I checked, and it looks like he's alive, 79, married, and living in New Orleans and Massachusetts. Hang in there, Roy. You came back to a place like this. Why? A man like you. Why? Journeyman pitcher with the Phillies, Dodgers, appeared in three games as a reliever, did not play at all last year, worked as an electrician in the family business, picked up off the scrap heap a Rule 5 acquisition by the Diamondbacks, sent to the minors to work as a starter, called up and made his major league debut as a starter against the Padres, threw a no-hitter his family in the stands. Fairy tales come true. Overheard what I tell songwriters, if you're waiting for validation, it's going to be a long road. You have to find peace and joy in the process. I've been thinking about why I write. I think it's because I enjoy that process. It's often called composition. I tend to think of it as formulation. It's putting words together to create an effect. The words have to work together. Roy Blount says that humor comes from self-loathing. I'm not sure that's true. Maybe it is 
for him. I think some humorists get a kick out of looking at the world, which is funny, all kinds of funny, the human world anyway, from an odd angle. They don't mind being oddballs. Blount uses the word peculiar, and I remember, I think it was A.J. Liebling, someone wrote that a writer finds their voice in the peculiar. At the time, I agreed. I still do. I like being peculiar. But if you are peculiar, beware. People will call you queer. It takes a while to realize that it's also okay to be queer. When the children go back to school soon, if it is a mix of mask and no mask, it will lead to trouble, I think. If a masked child gets sick with the virus, the no masks will be blamed for this with much bitterness. If a child should die, I don't even want to think about that. I have said that I'm glad I'm not a cop. I'm also glad I'm not involved in any school system. I don't see how any good can come from this. Is this made for kids? You bet it is. At the time he wrote the book I am reading, 20 years ago, Roy Blount said he was a humorist and a grandfather who lives alone. He made it sound worse than a political prisoner in China or a terrorist in Guantanamo. I think he is married now, and happily, I hope. A marriage exists on give and take. When that active process falters or becomes unbalanced, the marriage is over. Divorce ensues. Similarly, a social contract is based on the surrender or sacrifice of a certain portion of each individual's liberty. How much that is depends on each situation. But, by agreement, everyone is under partial restraint. As Kurt Vonnegut wrote, we give up the ace. No one can think they speak the truth. So no one is playing with a full deck. When an individual decides that the sacrifice is too great and refuses to play along, then the social contract is broken. Anarchy or repression results. Also, when some things, when someone thinks that they are expressing the truth, that strains the social contract. Vietnam was a disaster because we had to admit that everything we did there, all of it, was in vain. Afghanistan mirrors that. We leave, the government disintegrates, the Taliban runs everything. We are humiliated. All they had to do was wait us out. The PM is silent. My guess is that he will find a way to blame the trumpet, and the media will accept that. Because he was such an arrogant shit, the trumpet made a very agreeable target.